The Collin County Sheriff fired and arrested a jailer. He says smuggled contraband into the jail for a murder suspect. Can the long arm of the law reach those sworn to uphold it? Who will prevail when justice finally catches up? Join us as we explore the riveting tales of corrupt cops facing the music. Let's uncover the truth together. Number one. Tyler Moody, a former Collin County Jail Detention Officer, faced serious consequences after being caught providing an inmate with a prohibited cell phone in October 2022. Moody's illicit actions were exposed when jail administrators detected an unauthorized phone had been used by an inmate to make calls. The investigation was launched to uncover the source of the contraband device. Video evidence eventually captured Moody passing the cell phone to the inmate in custody. When confronted with the proof, Moody admitted to his wrongdoing and was promptly terminated by Collin County Sheriff Jim Skinner. But Moody's misdeeds didn't just cost him his job. They landed him criminal charges as well. Skinner says Moody confessed to sneaking a cell phone inside. He says yesterday they noticed phone calls were being made from a jail cell, so they searched that cell. The former detention officer was arrested and booked into the very same jail he had guarded while employed there. Sheriff Skinner took it upon himself to personally discharge Moody and then arrest him for the third degree felony offense. The sheriff's office released footage of Moody being fired, showing Skinner sternly telling him, you betrayed the confidence of every citizen we have the honor of serving, and you've abused the confidence of the courageous and dedicated men and women with whom you've been working with for nearly three years. Moody violated the public trust and ethical standards expected of law enforcement officers. Smuggling contraband like cell phones into jails poses major risks to facility safety and order. It also undermines administrators' control, since inmates can use phones to engage in criminal activity even while incarcerated. Sheriff Skinner recognized the gravity of Moody's offenses and how they threaten jail security. That's why Skinner felt it important not just to fire Moody, but arrest him as a display that such corruption would not be tolerated. Well, to develop strategies and plans and communicate uh, with others on the outside because uh, we're always concerned about escapes uh, and, and these types of things. So what goes on within the walls typically of a detention facility, uh, we need to keep it that way for security reasons. The unusual circumstances of having Moody become an inmate in the very facility once guarded highlights that no one is above the law. The sheriff's office video publicizing Moody's termination and arrest sent a strong warning that abuses of authority would be punished severely. While rare, police corruption most often comes from individual officers rather than entire agencies. Moody's case shows that even within law enforcement, misconduct is taken seriously, and perpetrators face consequences for breaking the public's trust. The Collins County Sheriff's Office demonstrated an organizational commitment to accountability by swiftly responding to Moody's crimes with termination and prosecution. This integrity helps maintain citizens' faith in local law enforcement's intention to serve justly. Number two, Jalen Fleer, a former San Diego Sheriff's deputy, received a 12-year prison sentence after pleading guilty to an array of crimes, including sexual acts with minors. The shocking offenses took place in early 2020, when Fleer was 27 years old. The case came to light when several underage victims spoke with authorities about the abuse they'd suffered at the hands of Fleer. I have never seen a more despicable set of facts as I've seen in this case. As details emerged during court proceedings, a disturbing picture was painted of Flair's activities. According to prosecutors, Flair actively targeted multiple young females, attempting to entice them with money and making clear his desire for even younger victims. The fact that Flair was a sworn law enforcement officer made the teenage girls afraid to report his crimes to police. Among the charges were counts of felony oral copulation with a minor and committing lewd acts upon 14 to 15 year old children. In total, Fleer pleaded guilty to 20 separate criminal offenses related to the corruption and sexual exploitation of minors. He tells multiple 12-year-old girls, do you have any younger friends who are interested in older men? I'll give you money to hook me up with them. The younger they are, the better. At sentencing, prosecutors emphasized how Fleer groomed susceptible teenagers and used his position of authority to both dissuade them from speaking out and manipulate them into compliance. Officers who engage in sexual misconduct while on duty commit an especially egregious offense, given their responsibility to protect vulnerable community members. Flair's case also underscores the need for robust oversight and accountability measures to identify and remove problematic officers before their behavior escalates. 
By handing down a lengthy 12-year prison term, the judge in Flair's case sent a strong message that corruption by law enforcement will not be tolerated. The victims deserve to see justice served for the grievous harms inflicted upon them. Number 3. Among the most notorious cases of police corruption in recent history is that of Daniel Holtzclaw, the former Oklahoma City officer convicted in 2015 of sexually assaulting 13 women while on duty. Holtzclaw targeted African-American women in neighborhoods he was assigned to patrol from December 2013 through June 2014. Of the 36 charges brought against him, Holtzclaw was found guilty on 18 counts of rape, sexual battery, oral sodomy, and other dehumanizing crimes. Former Oklahoma City police officer Daniel Holtzclaw reacting to his conviction. This is back in 2015. He carried out these acts through threats of arrest and physical force, confident his victims would be too intimidated to speak out given his status as a uniformed officer. Holtzclaw assumed that no one would believe the words of a poor black woman over that of a cop. During trial, prosecutors characterized Holtzclaw as calculating and dangerous, intentionally abusing his position to fulfill his predatory urges. Despite overwhelming evidence of guilt, Holtzclaw maintains his innocence and hopes to eventually overturn his convictions and 263-year prison sentence, but his victims remain adamant about what he did to them. For victims of police sexual violence, the road to justice has been challenging. The emotional damage from these incidents is extensive, amplified by the fact that they were perpetrated by someone sworn to protect the public. By the board, and it comes just one day after Holtzclaw's team released a deposition from back in 2018, where, as you said, one of his accusers dramatically changes her story. Cases like Holtzclaw's illustrate the dire need for cultural changes around issues of police brutality, racism, misogyny, and related injustices that permeate law enforcement. When officers become criminals themselves, exploiting positions of power to inflict harm against the vulnerable populations they are duty-bound to safeguard, it represents the utmost betrayal of the badge and erosion of citizens' civil liberties. These women deserve protection by police, not persecution from them. By punishing Holtzclaw's corruption to the fullest extent, the justice system took a stand against the abuse of trust by those in authority. Number 4. The trial of former Florida Sheriff's Deputy Zachary Wester captured national attention in 2021 when he faced 67 charges, including racketeering, fabricating evidence, false imprisonment, and possession of controlled substances. Wester was accused of planting drugs in dozens of cars during routine traffic stops and then arresting the unsuspecting drivers, despite their denials of owning the narcotics. The seemingly unwarranted arrests raised internal suspicions in the Sheriff's Department, leading to Wester's suspension in 2018. I'm just trying to figure out how that stuff got in your car. You gonna go to jail today for possession of methamphetamine, okay? Oh man, dude, I'm serious, dude. Anything, what you want me to do, man? Three years later, his extensive criminal case finally went to trial, as he pleaded not guilty to the myriad charges of corruption and abuse of power. As prosecutors argued, this is a case about an abuse of an incredible power, about the abuse of an incredible trust that we all put, and we all have to put, in law enforcement in a society. The centerpiece of the prosecution's argument was Wester's own body camera footage from the disputed traffic stops. The videos depicted Wester appearing to manipulate and plant evidence in vehicles he had received consent to search, since the drivers believed they had nothing to hide. One driver highlighted was Stephen Van, a convicted felon who claimed he had just been released from jail when Wester allegedly planted a bag of methamphetamine in his car during a stop. You think we'd be concerned about bombs, hand grenades, Drugs. rocket launchers? <laughs> okay. Like other drivers who testified, Van had permitted Wester to search his vehicle because he genuinely had no contraband. But the videos implied Wester conjured up fake evidence to justify arrests. In one clip, Wester is seen holding a small object in his left hand just before donning gloves to begin a search, which prosecutors say was a bag of meth he planned to plant as fabricated evidence. Another driver, Teresa Odom, was shown cooperating politely at first before Wester supposedly found meth in her car door. Odom denied the drugs were hers, but she was arrested anyway. Alarmingly, some of Wester's body cam footage had disappeared before trial, raising suspicions of tampering and cover-ups. The defense claimed Wester was simply an ambitious officer trying to advance his career, not a rogue deputy planting drugs. But the 12 drivers' consistent accounts of being framed in the videos depicting Wester's questionable searches eroded his credibility. 
After a week-long trial and seven hours of deliberation, the jury found Wester guilty on 19 charges, including racketeering, official misconduct, fabricating evidence, and false imprisonment against specific drivers. The verdict affirmed that law enforcement officers cannot abuse their powers and betray public trust without facing consequences. Wester was sentenced to 12.5 years in state prison. His case underscores the need for police oversight and accountability when officers cross legal and ethical lines. That's a wrap on another intense episode. We've peeled back the layers of corruption within law enforcement, revealing the consequences faced by those who betray the badge. If you're as captivated by these stories as we are, smash that like button, subscribe for more gripping content, and let's continue our journey towards a more just society. Until next time, stay aware, stay vigilant, and let's keep the conversation going.